Despite qualification in medicine at Oxford University in 1889, Wilfred Thomason Grenfell was still unmotivated. Inspired by a man who was both an evangelist and a surgeon, Sir Frederick Treves, Wilfred joined the national mission to deep-sea fishermen in the North Sea. The challenges of the mission led him to become its superintendent in 1890. Two years later, he first visited Newfoundland and Labrador. The horrible medical and economic conditions of the area fishermen affected him greatly. Grenfell was a man who found something that he thought he could make better in the world, and he took it upon himself that he was going to do what he could to do to improve the life of people living in this part of the, part of the world. He was an adventurer without question. He just loved to come up here on the headlines and, and, and to, to travel and stand and be out, and, out in the open. He was a missionary, there's no doubt about that. He had firm, uh, strongly held religious convictions. He believed he had faith which was absolutely unshakable. Uh, he was a doctor. My father was vigorous, caring, determined, inquisitive, thinking the best of most people and able to persuade people to help them for long term and love it. Run by simple religious faith, his motto was, what would Christ do in my place? These exploited men had never even seen a doctor before. Dr. Grenfell supplied medicine, clothes, and God's word. By 1900, he had built a hospital in the town of St. Anthony, on the tip of Newfoundland's northern peninsula. Dr. Grenfell had become a fundraiser as well as physician, publicizing the fisherman's plight in books and tours. In addition, he built orphanages, churches, and treated the sick with one of the first hospital ships, the Strathcona. What made my father much more than just a medical doctor was, I think, partly bulldog tenacity. He tried to reach his goals. His aim was not only medical, he wanted to improve educational and living conditions as well. And partly it was his enthusiasm and ability to help others to come and help, and thereby find that they too could make a real difference in the life of others. In 1913, he parted company with the mission and established the International Grenfell Association, which still exists today. Knighted in 1927, Sir Wilfred Grenfell died in 1940 in Vermont, leaving an indelible imprint on the medical and social history of Newfoundland and Canada.